Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from DadX and today we're going to look at the exploration career missions, the last section. And the first one right here simply wants us to undock, open our sensor array and fly to an anomaly site called Anomaly Training Site. Very generic, very simple. Before we do that we've got a little bit of housekeeping to do. So we're going to switch to the right ship, well an appropriate ship, we could do this with the sigil because we don't need any equipment for this mission but we're going to switch into the Punisher because he's our friend, we like him and he's a bit quicker. One thing we are going to do, we're going to change the name, do not leave any of your ships with your character's name in the name, just do this. Change the name to whatever you like, basically if you leave your character name in your ship name you are giving everybody free intel. The most valuable intel you can ever have if you want to mess with people is who is flying what ship. Leave your name in the name of your ship and you're giving that away for free for anyone who wants to look on their D-scan. Remember we were given a coercer. To fly a coercer we need a Mar Destroyer skill. We can buy the skill book and train it right there. That's an expensive way to do it. An alternative way to do it like I showed you earlier is simply to go here and click on there twice and it will let you buy the skill right from there. But that was 130,000. If you just right click on the skill and go to market, it's actually 100,000 there. So do check some of the very low level skills. There's no price difference between the last two methods, but it's always worth checking. And basically, if you want to save yourself a little bit of time, because potentially you might have to fly somewhere to get that skill book, it won't always be in the station you're in. Save yourself a bit of time, buy it off the skill queue, save yourself a bit of money, go and fetch the skill book. So we bought the skill book, we've injected it right there, you just right click on it, inject skill, and then it will appear here in our skill queue, and we're just going to drag down, I think, three levels of Amar Destroyer. So for those of you that do know the channel, or have seen any of my uh, alpha videos, I like going into low second destroyers and making a lot of money and having lots of fun. So we're going to get three levels of that trained up and let's just see what can we do to fill this queue up. I think we'll have a look at the gunnery skills. Now a lot of these I could throw in the end of that queue and leave it running because remember the length of the, the skills that you've got queued can be well over 24 hours. They all have to start within 24 hours. We'll simply go for small energy turrets. I think that's going to up the damage from the small guns and I think we'll also drag that up above destroyer free because that will be useful in the frigates and then we'll train the third level of Amar destroyer and we'll get to that i like really to have a lot of the skills relevant to any ship at least to level three each before i start going out and getting too busy with them that's not a prerequisite always but it's definitely a good safe place to be you don't want to go into a ship that you can't fit very well and get into a situation that you can't handle but we'll talk about that in more detail another time, I'll just move my overview to where it should be. I've changed display, which changes the resolution, which uh, jiggles things around a little bit. Anyway, this button right here, on the left we have what we want, on the right is the D-scan. It's the sensor array right here. This will show you the ones that have already got names, they are anomalies. The ones that simply say cosmic signature, they are signatures which need to be scanned down, and we'll get to that soon. But for now, all we need to do is click Warp 2 on the desired anomaly and we go straight there. Now this is how in-game you will find a lot of the combat sites that are around in any security state of space, high sec, low sec, null sec, etc. Even in wormholes there are anomaly sites for you to go and run. So here we are, we've got a little message up, all we need to do is go and get the document out of the box that just proves we've been up here and go back and dock up so that's easy peasy we can definitely speed up the footage for this i think hey eh? all we need to do is to fly over within 2500 meters you can then double click on the overview or you can right click and say open and we get inside and we loot all and we're done and we're just going to go and dock and hand this mission in so i'll see you there to do that so here we are indeed back in the station so we'll hand that mission in and we'll ask for the next one please right the reward for this includes a tormentor frigate which of course we had to build to hand in for one of the missions so if you did these missions in the right order you might get lucky and, and get the tormentor from this mission in time to hand it in but you'd have to do the missions in quite a weird order and i wouldn't worry about it because the way i've shown you how to do these career missions saves you so much time 
And making money is certainly not going to be a problem. A few hundred grand will be quite insignificant within a couple of days of us getting out into the real world. I can guarantee you that. This mission, to be honest, is going to take us out and we're going to warp up to the site. There are going to be a series of acceleration gates. We're going to see a data site, see a relic site and see a gas site. That's all there is to it. There's nothing really to do apart apart from picking up some free scanning equipment, which we shall make sure we do on the way through. That's in the first room that we'll get to. I'm going to speed this footage right up now. Now, exploration, early game, and I've done this in videos with alpha clones, low skill clones, relatively speaking, you can make yourself billions. I have done it. I've done it in videos. And you're only ever risking what is a very cheap ship in the overall scheme of things. Anyway, right here, we need to just check before we go through the gate. We need to check the message. This is where we need to pick up from this box right here. Again, just fly over within 2,500 meters. Loot all. So we've got a probe launcher, some probes, and a relic and a data analyzer. And they are the basic tools of exploration. So we'll go through the next gate. And we're into a data site. The next bit of the conversation hasn't triggered because I didn't close that conversation window. So apologies for that. But this is a data site. They look vaguely similar but they all have their own little look to them and it, some of the sites themselves are quite impressive pieces of uh, architecture the loot from data sites is all small volume items it could be blueprints it could be some salvage materials it could be filaments for uses in other parts of the game and you can get augmentation decryptors which are used in tech 2 industry so that's basically the loot that you'd get from a data site We've got a relic site here with a big tangled up asteroid over there. Some of them hold uh, monuments, um, shattered temples, etc. Loot wise, again, it's all going to be small volume stuff. Just to give you an idea, I currently have a heron that lives in a wormhole. It logs off in there. Um, season two of Alpha's Wormhole Van Life will be up soon. It's half full. It's worth about 400 million. The loot will basically consist of salvage materials, which uh, accumulate very quickly. Some loot boxes in wormholes in particular can drop up to like 70, 80 million. And you can get that very early on in the game if you're willing to go there and get it. And then the third and final site here is the gas site. Now up on your overview settings, it should be pre-selected, but just check that you do have harvestable cloud selected down here. There we go. If that's not ticked, it won't show up on your overview. I'm going to put that onto my mining tab so it's right there. But these particular clouds do not show up anywhere at all. So we'll just head back and dock because we have completed the mission. I'm guessing they're not actually harvestable. If they were, they'd probably be farmed. <laughs> they'd probably be farmed like crazy. So I'm assuming that because they're dummy gas clouds, they're not showing up as harvestable clouds on the overview. If I'm wrong, correct me in a comment. Always feel free to do that. But that mission, I guess, was just a little bit of a, an example. And just to explain the differences, and also it did give us some very useful kit. Now, the next three missions, because there are only five exploration career missions, are going to be to scan and hack those sites for real. The gas site, obviously, in real life, as it were, you're going to need a venture or a similar mining ship fitted with gas harvesters it is an expensive skill to be able to fit those modules but there is a video link down below that will give you much more information on mining and gas harvesting and bear in mind an alpha venture full of gas from a wormhole could be worth up to 50 million isk a load and even in low sec very recently my alpha venture managed to get about 26 million isk in an hour and that was just an alpha clone in low sec not even in a wormhole so we're back in the station. The next mission is to go out, scan down a data site, hack the box that's up there and retrieve the proof of discovery document, which is all we're going to get on these missions. There's no actual loot, unfortunately. So we shall accept that and we shall get our ship prepared for this mission. So we're just going to stick with the Punisher. There are no rats to kill on these sites. Indeed, on most relic sites and data sites in the game, with the exception of some in wormholes, there will never be rats. So you don't need a weapon system on your ship, really. So we're going to take one laser off and we're going to put in its place the core probe launcher one, which needs a high slot to fit into. And the eight probes we're going to load into the core probe launcher like you would ammos into a gun. So if you just drag them onto the fitting screen like that, you're loaded up. Some ships will have what's known as a utility slot. It's an extra high slot that won't take a weapon system, but you could put something like a probe launcher or a cloak 
or some other module up there. In this case, we don't need any DPS, so we're just gonna do that. We're gonna take off the web, we're gonna put on the data analyzer. As you saw in some of the earlier missions, um, we did do a little bit of hacking, we just didn't do any scanning. So you have seen how they work before. So we're equipped for this mission. What we're actually going to do when we undock now is scan down all three of the signatures that we need. The missions will come up one at a time. This one go and do the data site, then we'll come back, then get the red excite mission, then the gas site mission. But we're going to scan them all down at once. And I'm going to keep this a little bit light and focused on what we need to do for these missions. Now, link down below is a full guide to exploration, fits, anything you need to know about the ships, the implants, the modules, the skills that are going to help you be a better explorer where to look for the loot, what to prioritize. In fact, I'm proud to say that video is one of three of my videos that are linked directly from the CCP website in the Academy section. That also covers the use of combat probes with those you can find ships if you want to do a little bit of hunting, but you can also find abandoned drones and other treasures. In one video link below, Alpha's Good Day, I find nearly half a billion isks worth of fighters left out after a battle in low sec. I need to go and get Anarius to pick them up after I've scanned them down in my Heron. So we're stopping our ship out here and launching our probes. You can press F1 if the launcher's in that position or click on it. Here is where we open the scanning windows. There's a D scan on the right. This is the one we want, the exploration, the probe scanning window, the selection on the left. We're going to filter out the anomalies because all we want to see are the scanning signatures. It can be useful just to keep this screen tidy by filtering stuff on and off as required. For some of that stuff, you will need combat probes such as ships and structures. The other section of this window is a 3D map of the solar system. You can scroll in and out with the mouse wheel. Remember, it is 3D. If you hold the right button down on your mouse, you can twist the screen around. Make sure when you're doing your scanning, you do remember you're in 3D. Using the Alt key and the Shift key and Control key, you can change the formation, the grouping, um, and the rel like the relative position of the probes. That is again in the more detailed tutorial linked down below. Using these buttons here, we can change the formation to big, large formations like that, which you'd use for scanning a whole system, maybe for structures or ships and such, but for Signature scanning, we want to stay on the tight formation. You can start your scanning either at 4AU or 8AU. I vary between the two methods. We're set at 4AU right now. Up here is a celestial, it's a planet. With a selection of signatures around it, which are all the red crosses with the red circles. Now, signatures will always spawn within 4AU of one of those celestials. So with our probes appropriately ranged at 4AU, we put it over that celestial and we press the analyze button and then we'll get a line sweeping across the signature list there that is the scan in progress the progress of that line will get quicker as you learn skills you can use implants and modules to speed that up and there you are there's a data site exactly what we were looking for we scanned that to 30 percent we need to get that to 100 percent scan strength to be able to warp to it and save it as a bookmark so that is basically the goal Hold the right button down, swing it up to make sure it's right on the signature in this plane. If it isn't, you can grab the arrow and move it up and down. The two buttons at the bottom of that window where the probes were, you can click on those to click it between the two view axes, but I prefer doing it manually. Or you can go straight on the box itself and drag it around. You can move the view around, make sure you're all lined up. And then you bring your scan down. This is the normal process. Each time you get a signature, you can bring your scan down. But the problem here is that you can see the red circle is bigger than the kind of the circle that you draw, or exactly the same size, I should say, as the circle that we draw around all of our probes. That means we're going to get the very best, a very weak signal, and maybe no result at all. And now you see we're back to 0%. It's something to bear in mind, your scanner, your probes need to be scanning an area that includes all of the circle around the signature and over it. You don't want to be just inside it. You're going to at the very best get a weak signal. It's the downside of scanning at 0.4 degrees on a celestial is you get lots of weak signature hits, perhaps potentially, but then you're going to have to rescan them all at 4AU. Anyway, Rescanning at 4AU, we've not only got a very good hit on our data site, but we've also picked up the hint of a relic site, so we'll get to that next. Now we've got a nice strong signal here, we can use the bar down here to adjust the scan range. That's down to 2AU, and we need to get this up to 100%. I'm pretty confident we're going to hit that now, so we'll get on, click the Analyze button. 
off we go fingers crossed i don't think we're going to need fingers crossed the relic site we may lose that scan completely yes we have simply because it's now out the range of our probes but we know exactly where it is and we've got a good head start on that one so we're going to right click add to bookmarks just save that bookmark we'll come back to that later we'll go back over to the relic site we'll just drag the probes over there and there you go drag it down and again you'll see exactly the same issue i'll demonstrate again the probes are fitting just inside the circle around the signature we're not going to get a very good reading from that but i also i do want to trigger one of the unusual readings we can get and from what i found this is the best way to do it so now we're going to increase the range and scan again exactly the same position we don't need to move but there you go just make sure that red circle is completely inside all of those blue circles and you'll always get a better result than you had before so we increase the range we'll scan again and let's see what we get this time apologies there's no game sound in this recording guys i've integrated a new microphone into the setup and it has kept resetting the recording software i'm on top of it now there should be an appropriately pingy noise when the probes are scanning anyway we've got a double point signature here so we're going to move our probes right onto the line in the middle now i've heard some people say just move it to one end or the other and scan it at sort of the next au down but as you can see we're going to go in the middle but this is too small a probe radius here because the actual signature is going to appear within a range of one of those points so scanning from the middle at a bigger range like this, this will get us down to one single point with a reasonably good signal strength. So let's give that a go and see where that gets us. Pretty confident, to be honest. But these are one of the ones that will catch you out. There's another one that appears as a circle. It's the same principle. Just make sure your probes are covering the whole area. There you go. We're straight to 100%. So we're going to bookmark that one. Now we just need to find a gas site. To be prepared to actually go and do all these missions so starting your scanning at 4au and on a celestial i think is more appropriate if there are very few signatures around or in that part of the system i'm going to set the scan range up to 8au this is my preferred method and i'm going to just move that over that big mess of signatures there when there's a lot of signatures around I'm going to do that and I'm going to analyse. Now I'm confident we'll get some kind of reading on all of the signatures and then I'll know I can go to each of those signatures at 4AU and just start scanning each one down from there. Starting on Celestial, you may find if there's a lot of signatures around, you have to keep going up and down to actually get them to scan down for you. And indeed here, look, we've got all these signatures at 100%. That's a little bit artificial because these are very easy to scan signatures. And that's one of the reasons I can't make too much of a scanning and hacking tutorial out of these missions is that they are so simplified and easy to do. What I suggest is that if you want, you take your time and you just scan down every signature available here. Just to get your head around it, it's a very simple process. It will very rarely confuse you and you'll only get better at it. And the better and quicker you get at it, the more efficient you'll be at it. And the more money you get at it so there you are we've now bookmarked all three signatures one of each type our scanning tasks for now are complete so what you can do here you can detach this information window from the map clicking that button there and then close the map that will leave us the window right there with all the signatures and anomalies on display for us to warp to at our leisure alternatively press l and you'll get a little window up of anything that you've bookmarked in the system you are currently in. That is my preferred method, simply because it takes up less space. So all we've got to do is right click over here on our bookmark and warp to and we'll go to the data site and get that done. That will be the first mission complete. There's something I've forgotten though, and that's to get my probes in. So we're going to reopen the probe scanning window and just click this button up here to get the probes back into your ship. If you do forget to do that, when you dock up or you go for a Stargate, your probes will automatically go back into your cargo hold. You can't actually leave them behind. You used to be able to. I used to do it a lot. What aren't mentioned in these missions are combat signatures and wormhole signatures, the other two types. One, as the name suggests, will reveal you a combat site, which you can go and run and get some decent loot out of potentially. The second, obviously, is a wormhole which leads you into a different part of space. And there's a video down below of how to take your alpha exploration ship into a wormhole and get very rich indeed. 
I reloaded my probe launcher while I was chatting there by right clicking and just clicking reload. We've got to approach the box, get within 5,000 meters to do the hack. Now on a normal site, there'd be a selection of boxes up here, sometimes at a, quite a long distance between them, maybe 60, 70 kilometers. So you might be on the site for quite a long time and spend quite a lot of that time actually moving between the boxes. So lock up the box, get within 5,000 meters for the analyzer to be able to work. But bear in mind, you need to be within 2,500 meters to then pick up whatever is inside it. So get in nice and tight. And then once we're there, we're going to click the analyzer, which will open the hack screen, which we have seen before. And if you remember, this is simply follow the numbers, follow the numbers down. And the lower the number, the closer you are to something of interest. And hopefully that something of interest will be positive. Again, these hacks are so simple that really you do need to watch if you want more information. That video down below that will tell you all about these hack screens and the good things and the bad things you may find while running them. The node has got to be in this corner somewhere on one of these nodes. There you are. That in effect is the lock. Now the top number there is in effect is hit points. The bottom number, the amount of damage he'll do. And the same applies to our numbers. So we've gone down 10 hit points. We've got 15 left. He's gone down 10 hit points, but he's only got 10 points left. So when we click him again, He's run out of hit points, we've got five left and we're in. And that is basically how the hacking works. So then just double click on the box. We need to be within 2,500 meters, which we're just outside of. So we'll swing round. The best orbit for you to be is probably about a thousand meters, but you do need to be careful that you've got space to warp out. There you go. We've got what we needed, which is the fake loot certificate. I'm going to see you at the next hack. I'm going to go hand this mission in, get the next mission, which will be to find and hack the relic site. But we've already bookmarked the relic site, so we can go straight there. I'll see you there just to show you that hack. Do remember to switch your data analyzer for a relic analyzer whilst you're docked and getting the next mission. We're on the relic site now. We're just getting into range to start the hack. So there you go. We'll start cycling the analyzer. And again, just follow the numbers. Let's see if there's anything more interesting in this hack than there was in the last one. Let's see. We'll go for that one. We'll go for that one. There he is. So again, we'll just click on him. We know we're going to have no troubles here. Click him away. We've got more numbers than him. It's as simple as that. Sometimes, obviously, as you're working away along the grid, there will be stuff that run you down on your hit points. So you can come a bit unstuck at the end but you will get stronger as you skill up and you can also fit modules and use implants to make you more effective at the scanning and the hacking so we're just handing in that mission the last mission here which is to go and do the same for the gas signature site gives you a bit of information about gas in here that's used for the production of boosters which will increase the performance of your ship in certain aspects Main thing to note is that they're going to give us a gas pass key which we need to take up with us. So make sure we put that in the ship before we leave. And the prize is going to be some cash and a magnate, which is the Amarian Dedicated Exploration Frigate Tech 1. So that's going to be very handy. But again, we'll just carry on with what we need to do in the Punisher. Put the pass key in there. We don't need the analyzers for this mission at all. We've already scanned down the signature. All we've got to do is go up there and get the book and come back. Here we are just going into the site. The pass key was for this acceleration gate that's right here, which is unusual career mission because uh, gas sites do not have acceleration gates to get into them out in general space at all. But I guess it's kind of doubling up. We're learning about remembering to bring the pass key. And here, for real this time, are a couple of harvestable clouds. We can get the information on them. Unfortunately, I can't tell how big they are. I think they must be quite tiny because, again, they would just be getting farmed like crazy. But who knows? Something for you to find out. I have no survey scanner on me, so I can't check. But as you see, the price of the gas is pretty good. If you happen to have a friend or an alt that can suck gas, then uh, maybe you get them up here to have a little mooch around. Might make a bit of money up here. Off the back of your career missions, that would be quite handy. Anyway, we do need to remember to get this document out of the box. So we just got to approach, open it, and loot all. There we are. And we're done. That is the five career missions for exploration complete. I'll see you back in the hangar, and we'll discuss about what we're going to do next. 
So we're back in the hangar, we've handed in that mission, we've now got a magnet amongst our fine collection of ships, the Coercer we can fly soon. The magnet just operates off of the Amar frigate skill, you don't need to learn a separate skill for that, and our skills for scanning are maxed out already for an alpha, we trained those in one of the earlier episodes. So we shall be back very soon to build these ships and start using them in the real world. All the guides are linked below that will get you going in any area of the game. But if you want to see me get this Amar Alt going, then join us very soon to see us doing that. I'm going to have a tidy up here. I'm going to sell the stuff we don't need, which might even include a ship or two. And we shall return and make a plan. So for now, have fun, take care, take your time. Please do take the time to leave a like if you've liked and enjoyed the video. That always helps us here at the channel. Any comments and questions, leave them down below. They're always welcome and subscribe if you want to stay in touch. What I'm actually doing right here is trashing all of the civilian modules we've been given in those missions. They are no longer any use to us whatsoever. They have no value and no use. Get rid of them. But for now, my friends, fly safe, fly brave. And for now, goodbye.